You're listening to Sunny Side Up, a B2B podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Sunny Side Up. I'm your host, Chris Moody. Today, I'm very excited to talk to one of my friends at Demand Base, Gareth Noonan, about a world without cookies. Gareth, welcome to the show. Tell everyone about yourself. Great. Thanks, Chris. Um, I am the general manager of the advertising business here at Demand Base. So I work with the, the revenue and the product and engineering organizations on all things B2B ad tech and DSP. Sweet. Well, we know everyone's talking about cookie deprecation, which is the fancy term for what's happening. But a world without cookies, you know, how did we get here and what do you think is starting to happen? So the reality, Chris, is that we've been here for quite a while, for really six or seven years. Um, Safari was the first browser to disable third party cookies as a standard part of targeting and measurement within the browser. Uh, And then Firefox followed suit in 2019. And in 2020, Google, who obviously owned the Chrome browser, uh, Chrome is typically um, said to have about 65% of global market share. And so in 2020, Google followed suit and said that they were going to embark on a pretty lengthy plan to disable third-party cookies in Chrome as well uh, and started engaging with the industry on what they were going to do, what the timing would be, and what the next sort of versions of targeting and measurement would look like within Chrome. And so it's been you know, quite a process, really going over four years. Uh, but in 2022, Google did definitively say, look, no more delays. We are doing this in 2024. It's going to start very gradually in January, where certain Chrome users will start to be transitioned off the the previous version where third-party cookies were enabled. And then gradually that that proportion of of Chrome users will grow throughout the year. And the objective is to have everybody off by Q4. Um, And what does this mean is, um, you know, obviously what's kind of most relevant and and most top of mind for uh, a lot of our customers and a lot of our listeners. Um, You know, just to kind of start at the beginning, what are third-party cookies? They're pieces of code uh, that are dropped on your browser as you're visiting websites, as you're reading certain content within those websites, as ads are delivered to you, as you interact with those ads. All of these pieces of information are basically gathered in the browser and can then be communicated um, to the ad tech ecosystem uh, to make sure that you are seeing the most targeted and the most relevant ads. Uh, And so the change that's happening here is moving away from that individual level targeting and measurement to a world that's much more based on common behaviors and cohorts. Yeah, I think that's a great description, Gareth. And, you know, one of the things that I want to say it's surprising to me, but it's not as an almost lifetime marketer, lifelong, right? There seems to be this shock and awe now that it's really happening because the date kept getting pushed back. And when you and I were talking before, I know that there's a small percentage you think are in the know and know everything that's going on. But a lot of folks are what seems to be caught off guard for something that's been talked about for six or seven years, to your point. So, you know, how how do you respond to that type of situation where there are folks who are steps ahead and thinking about it, and then others that are relying on folks like you to explain, here's how the world is changing, here's what we're doing to solve it, here's why you shouldn't worry. So when you think about the the universe of people that we talk to from prospects, customers and partners, uh, needless to say, you're going from mid market all the way up to global like Fortune 50 enterprises. Um, And, you know, marketers, especially in the mid market and maybe lower enterprise um, segments, they're pulled in an awful lot of directions. Uh, You know, ad tech, programmatic, DSPs is just one part of what they do. Uh, And, you know, while people like me geek out on it, it is a pretty arcane and pretty inside baseball kind of topic. Uh, And so that's what we're here for. For the last four years, I would say the most common conversations and some of the most enjoyable conversations that I've had candidly and most rewarding conversations have been helping to guide uh, our our partners, uh, our customers and our prospects in, in this area. Uh, And so it's not surprising to me that, you know, maybe 20 or 30 percent of people feel like they're pretty buttoned up. They've got, you know, deep knowledge on this. And then for others, they're still navigating because, you know, we all work with deadlines. We all work with prioritization. And when somebody tells you in 2022 that this is happening in 2024, guess what? It's a 2024 problem. Right. Uh, And so you have to trust your technology partners like Demandbase that we're on it, that we're aware of it and that we're prepared. And so that's what we've been doing for the last four years. I love that. And, 
you know, if we if we split it into two camps, so every single one of us, we are users of the internet. So I, I'd love to understand what the experience will be like for us. And then the the other hand of that is we are pretty much all trying to advertise to other businesses, which the businesses consist of people. So I'd love to understand the impact for both us as users and us as B2B advertisers. So in terms of users, uh, I think initially people are going to see more contextual advertising. So if you are on Business Insider and you're reading the the media and technology section, you're you're going to see ads that are relevant to that persona. Um, Similarly, if you're in more of a finance role and you're on a, a site that specializes in that topic, you're going to see ads relevant to that context. Where there will be some difference is where you're being targeted on a first party basis, where you've previously consented and opted into communications from a company. And a company has you in their CRM, has you in their marketing automation, and so, uh, you know, can provide more relevant and and more direct advertising to you. Um, In terms of advertisers, you know, from our perspective, uh, I actually think that B2B is going to be in better shape than B2C initially. Uh, B2C has been very cookie dependent for a long time. Whereas in the B2B world, we have other signals like us at demand base, for example. Uh, You know, one of the the key offerings and key differentiators that we bring is uh, eliminating waste. We will never deliver an impression to a user unless we have first associated them with a target account that our customer's campaign is looking to reach. And a lot of that is based on IP address. We've mapped billions of IP addresses globally and associated them with businesses, with companies. And so that's not going to change. IP address is still very much available. Uh, And then other signals that we have are um, segmentation, like firmographics, how big is the company, how many employees, how many locations, what revenue range, those kinds of things. Technographics, like what technologies is a company using? And so we're going to continue to package all of those signals so that we can do account-based advertising based on the priorities and the the, the characteristics of those accounts. Um, And, you know, I think also the, the, like Google has made available uh, certain alternative kind of uh, technologies within a framework they call the privacy sandbox. Uh, And so when they made this announcement four years ago, they said, the Chrome team said that they would engage with the W3C, uh, the World Wide Web Consortium, which could be seen as the the rule setting body uh, for the open web. It's a .org, it's a nonprofit organization. Um, And so the privacy sandbox initiatives were floated by the W3C, were floated to the industry generally, uh, so that people could investigate and provide feedback. And certain technologies have come out of the privacy sandbox Um, two of the ones that are quite prominent. One is called the Topics API. And so I know we're getting into the weeds a bit here, but it is important for for people to kind of understand the the future that we're moving towards. And so the Topics API basically, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we're moving from a world of individual person level targeting and measurement to more kind of cohort based. And that's where Topics comes in. Chrome will look at the sites that we as individuals are visiting, the topics that we're reading and researching, and will start to group us into topics. Uh, And so every few weeks, these topics are potentially going to change, depending again on our browsing behavior, and they will be sent from the browser again into the ad tech ecosystem. So that whereas, you know, today I can see, Chris, uh, the specific sites Uh, that you've been reading, the specific ads that you've seen, how you've interacted with them. Uh, In a few months, it's going to be more, you know, Chris is interested in marketing. Chris is interested in, uh, you know, North Carolina college sports. Uh, It'll go down to those kinds of levels, but it's never going to get down to the granularity that it was previously. Uh, And another feature coming out of the privacy sandbox is called protected audiences, which is very much based on first party cookies. And so first party cookies are much more self-contained within a specific site that you are visiting uh, and how you interact within that site and doesn't give you the sort of cross-site visibility of third party cookies that shows how you basically all of your activity across the browser. First party is much more based on what you do on a particular site uh, and also maybe how that interacts with your CRM and with your marketing automation. So those are the first two technologies to come out of the privacy sandbox. And again, you know, Google has been pretty transparent about communicating those. Um, You know, it's not going to be plain sailing. Like this year is all about testing. Uh, A lot of folks who have been looking at these uh, these APIs, the Topics API and protected audiences are seeing mixed results. And not surprisingly, you're just seeing less signal 
you know, I mean, that's what we expected. So it's really for us in the industry to understand the signal that is available and pair that with the other B2B signals that we have around what I mentioned, you know, IP, firmographics, et cetera, uh, to make sure that we can still, uh, you know, get a decent sense of who this user is and the account and the business they're associated with and how best to target them. That's great. And, you know, if you were serving me ads, I'd click on the differentiation one that you talked about. So uh, I, I want to dive a little deeper on differentiation. Um, for many of us who don't geek out on this topic and spend as much time as you do with your expertise, I think it's easy to assume that everyone's the same. And you started to hit on some of the differentiators. So if if we're in a safe space in a room full of marketers who are trying to understand this cookie-less world, what are some of the things you would stress to them that they should be looking for that are points of differentiators? Because I know historically, demand base has not been the most braggadocious or loudest in the room, but there are points of differentiation that we need people to understand. I think that's a great point because, um, you know, when you go through a period of change like this, folks are going to lean into the specialization of their segment or of their target market. And so if you're using B2C ad tech, I mean, our message obviously would be that that's just never ideal uh, and you should use the right tool for the trade. Um, But that's only going to become, I think, more of an issue um, as uh, signal and addressability in Chrome decreases. The B2C focus and the B2C, you know, what's next and the technologies that emerge are going to be even more B2C focused around like individuals making quick transactions, low consideration purchases. As we know, in the B2B world, a lot of people are involved. It tends to be high budget, extended buying cycles, all of those things. And so now more than ever, you need to be sure that the platform that you choose uh, is focused on those outcomes uh, and those realities and that the post cookie technology that's being developed and recommendations that are being made and managed services that are available and consulting that's available, all of those things is in a B2B context. Um, and so, you know, in talking to customers, obviously, you know, I mentioned the privacy sandbox as I just did, but that's really just part of the picture. Um, other things that we need to look at are alternative identif- identifiers and alternative identity providers. Um, and so these can be thought of as companies that are bringing together signals and identifiers that don't depend on cookies. Um, so companies like LiveRamp, uh, like ID5, um, UID 2.0, which was an initiative that was originally launched by the Trade Desk and is now open source. Uh, these are all approaches to building out post-cookie identifiers that will never you know, capture 100% of the signal that we had, but at least are going to allow us to incrementally uh, continue to kind of target audiences. Um, you know, other very important considerations are your first-party data. You know, your first party data, these are people you know, they're not anonymized, um, they're consented, they're opted in, they're, they're in your CRM, they're in your marketing automation, like build out as much first party consented data and lists as possible. And that's actually where a B2B DSP can still be very, very useful. Because when we're targeting an account where we know based on IP that a user is from this target account, even if that user hasn't previously kind of consented and isn't in your CRM, you can still deliver them an account-based message and give them a reason to raise their hand with a call to action, with compelling content around, you know, a download, a webinar, uh, whatever it might be, like guide them to that point where they're willing to say, okay, I'm now ready to opt in you've given me a reason to and that helps to supplement your first party data and the other important thing i mentioned earlier is around context like really understanding uh, what are the sites what are the kinds of articles what are the profiles of content that buying committee members and decision makers within your target accounts are going to be reading because uh, you know context really was where programmatic advertising or was what preceded programmatic advertising uh, you know when web-based advertising started in 1996 and we're kind of going back to that a bit but with much better technology and much better understanding based on natural language processing, AI, all of those things. That's great. And for the businesses who may not have started this project in 2020, knowing, hey, we'll get to that in 2024 when it happens, if it happens, right? Um, What are some of the things they should be doing now? So obviously partnering with, um, you know, somebody who has been thinking about this and has been developing towards this, like Demandbase. Uh, you know, I mentioned the W3C as the official body that, that the Chrome team engaged with most. 
uh, and demand base was part of the W3C during this whole process. Um, and I would say really it was just us and Salesforce from a B2B perspective. It was very heavy on B2C. Fortunately, you know, we and Salesforce were there to, to offer the different perspective for B2B. So, you know, partnering with an expert resource, obviously. And then, as I mentioned, really focusing on building out your consented first party data and using uh, that account based advertising to, to drive those registrations and drive those hand raises. And as I mentioned, also understanding context, understanding the role of third party identifiers uh, and leaning into the sandbox and understanding standing it a bit like it's pretty in the weeds it's pretty arcane that's where the trusted partner comes in um, but you know if you are a, a campaign manager a digital marketer who's responsible for campaigns uh, you know i think it does behoove you to dive into this a bit more and there are incredible resources out there on the web and podcasts across all the the media you'd expect one more question for you today, Gareth. I'm sure we're going to get more questions from folks as they listen to this. So this will not be the first or the only time you and I talk about a world without cookies or cookie deprecation, whichever term you prefer. But what are some of the most likely next steps in timing? So as I mentioned, Chrome started this uh, in terms of the forced deprecation in, in January, um, and they opted, they started with about 1% of Chrome users, which translates to about 30 million people. And when I say the forced deprecation, uh, you could do this on a voluntary basis starting last July. I myself opted in um, on my mobile device to the Topics API and opted out of cookies. So it's been kind of interesting to see how that's evolved. Um, but gradually throughout the year, um, you know, users will start to get notifications in Chrome uh, around a change here that's happening that, you know, third party cookies are no longer going to be available for targeting them uh, and that they're being opted into topics, API protected audiences, those kinds of things. And needless to say, users can opt out of those as well. Uh, you know, Chrome is, you know, we're the users so we can control the settings there. Um, and, you know, I think you're going to see... Um, within the agency world, within the, the technology world, within the platform world, world like us, uh, you know, folks are going to emerge, I think, as, as leaders, as thought leaders, as um, like practical leaders um, around their, their readiness for this. And we'll start to see, you know, who's really been kind of paying attention. And I hope that part of that conversation is going to be around the specialization that I mentioned. If you're B2C, you know, you've been focused on certain areas. If you're B2B as we are, you know, we've been focused on different areas. And that's the use case that, you know, we intend to excel in. And there's going to be a lot of content around this. Um, there's going to be an awful lot of thought leadership. Uh, you know, obviously, we're going to publish this podcast. Uh, we're going to have a lot of web content. We're going to be out on the road doing events. We're going to be doing customer office hours. Uh, like we're here available to, to answer our customers' questions and concerns and will be throughout the year. Garrett, thanks so much for your time. I'm sure we're going to do this again soon, but appreciate getting started and having the conversation. My pleasure. Thanks, Chris. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Sunny Side Up. If you liked what you heard, please rate and review us and subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you consume podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube and Demand Based TV. 